today we have a guest, Sami Kalanen. He is from Finland. I'm going to let him introduce himself very quickly. Take it away, Sami. Oh. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, Sami Kalanen. I'm here close to Helsinki. Um, have a very, very wide range of backgrounds, but I've been working with, uh, with digital services since the middle of the 90s. Currently um, working with, um, uh, with a consultancy that does a lot of work with data analytics, uh, uh, but a lot that has to do with sort of um, uh, service design and users also. So it's not only sort of B2B, but we do B2C services. Been busy with data science for 10 years playing with closure for almost as long not not really 10 but uh, stuff like that and more and more closure all the time i don't know what do you want to know i can <laughs> i can be i can be anything so i came across sami when i joined this uh this sci closure this data science community and um our friend daniel had introduced us and uh, i only really recently came across this community uh would you mind sharing with me just the short origin story of how Cyclosh came came to be? Because I, I'm I'm curious. Uh, we have study groups on the weekends where we talk about different machine learning concepts and different data science concepts um, and closure and how it relates to closure. Um, how did how did this start, Sami? Yeah, so I I think there was a few people. It's not that old. Like two years ago, mm -hmm. who just got together, started talking about mm -hmm. how to improve the data science story in, in Clojure. Um, there's a few characters like Daniel, you mentioned Daniel, he, I think he's been one of the premium motors of the community side of the, of the thing. And he had oh, some yeah. efforts first, he tried locally to create a group around this subject, but it didn't work so well. So he reached out more internationally and there was a bunch of people who started talking and mm -hmm. writing libraries and and um, yeah, that's how it started. They moved on to Zulip and started discussing, mm -hmm. and now it's been growing ever since. And and actually, we're in a sort of a super interesting moment because in a kind of phase transition, mm -hmm. where where all of a sudden the sort of missing pieces are are falling into place. And and yeah, we can do data science with closure. I mean, you could always do it, but it there was idiosyncrasies and st pieces were missing and and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So. But but now we are there, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a data scientist, you're used to um, data scientists, we are kind of, we are kind of lazy. So we want to do the transformations in like five lines of dplyr or pandas mm -hmm. codes, and then we visu visualize, often we're not so interested in the sort of uh, computer science aspect, we just want to get things done. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was the part that wasn't really there, the sort of ex user experience of doing data science before. But now it's almost there. I think it's, uh, it's it, I, I think Daniel has been saying for a couple of months that it's weeks away. And I think mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is there. So, so, and now we're growing, there's more and more people getting involved, which is nice because uh -huh. That's something that, of course, is very much needed. Uh -huh. if, if you have an ecosystem, you need to have people who use these tools and uh -huh. uh, stuff like that. Yeah, um, that certainly is something I noticed about the group uh, upon entry is that they were so international that I think last mm. weekend we ended up having four meetings and they were supposed to be covering, um, or was it last week? The, two weeks ago, we had uh, four meetings. It was supposed to be covering mostly the same material but we had to have four meetings because the, everybody was in completely different time zones. Um, mm. So I know that's something that we're, we're, uh, we're working out, but it's really great to at least have a group to be working with people. And as you said, uh, meeting people internationally is, is that can only be good. Um, mm. So you had mentioned that you've been doing closure for a very long time and data science for a very long time and um, that data scientists are lazy, as you said. Um, so Clojure is not a language that is known for, well, I guess it is known for its laziness. <laughs> but um, but uh, Clojure developers, um, it's, it's not the easiest language to just fall into, such as Python, for example. Um, 
So why do you think that data science has a, a place in Clojure? Um, why do you feel, why use Clojure over something like Python or R? Um, mm. And how have the recent libraries developed helped you in that? Because I know that there's been some great work done in that realm. So I'd love to hear about that as well. Yeah, so I mean, it's a fair question. Why should you do it if you if you have R or you have Python or or, or some other tool? Um, I think I think Clojure has something to offer here. I mean, it's um, one way of um, um, sometimes it can be a struggle with those other platforms, even though you have the five lines and they work fine, but. When things get a little bit more more interesting, it usually it, you might be stuck. You might not get much further. Mm -hmm. And Clojure is a platform that handles um, data very well. It's more or less you. Ha I mean, if you if you know Clojure or Lisps, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the idea of, of 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 the language as data in itself, really. Mm -hmm. So, so it handles data very well. It also hand, handles ex, exploration super well because there's sort of famous REPL experience, what, mm -hmm. what you talk about. So, and especially Clojure does ans offer some answers for incidental complexity, which you do, mm -hmm. um, do often sort of uh, encounter in these other, other platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of the people got busy and started looking at, at making closure as a platform for data science and mm -hmm. and and there, there, there's some good reasons why mm -hmm. the simplicity of closure um mm -hmm. could actually be quite refreshing in this field and plus it's fun i i think that i've, I've noticed a a great number of ruby developers i think end up in closure and i, I don't know why mm. i've just noticed mm. i've just seen this and when That's i true. when i've asked when i've asked um they say that Ruby is is it's fun to it's a fun language to develop and it makes you feel good. It's it's you know not not too much weird syntax and and enclosure gives them that same happiness that spark of joy when you're developing. Um, you know I think it's also just anyone that's ever gotten it with closure wants to keep doing closure. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's true and actually. I mean, I, I omitted that part of the answer why closure because uh, I think many many closure users will will actually feel very strongly about that that aspect, the ergonomics. It's very super nice to write. Mm -hmm. It's it, it it's it's um, the way you can navigate your code, the structural mm -hmm. editing features, all these things. It's it's unparalleled. Mm -hmm. um, or if you talk about the REPL, REPL experience, it's the same oh, thing. It's yes. when you get used to it, it's yes. it's something else. And and when you talk to other people about it, mm -hmm. other languages, and, and I've used a couple of languages as well, a lot, a lot of people say, but we have a REPL. But you're mm -hmm. like, no, mm, mm, yeah, you do, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> or but, like, but... but what about Jupiter? It's like, uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> yes, sure, go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but at the same time it's super hard to convey um to convince these people I mean, it's a really a sort of exper experiential stuff when you when uh -huh. you start doing it you're like oh wow you get mm -hmm. past the first two hours of your parent um allergies and uh -huh. all of a sudden it's there and like you said the simplicity of the syntax is is so Just, fantastic mm. it makes yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah. Um, yeah i think there's a lot of lot of reasons okay have we you have had a we second part of, go on sorry go on you had a second part uh, which had to do with the libraries right yes yes or how has ecosystem? that changed over time because you've been doing this for so long and i know that recently um you know chris sternberger for example has written these amazing tools and some of these study groups we're just trying to figure out how to use them because, um, you know, and having been a part of the community for so long, Sami, how have you seen these tools change the landscape? Um, yeah. 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 I, um, yeah, to be honest, no one has been part of the community very long, but, but yeah, to, for, for, for a fair bit of time. Um, 
so uh, two years ago when the story started uh, mm -hmm. the, the main focus was how to, how to make this this possible in a in a kind of a ergonomic way and mm -hmm. a way you can do it and so many things has happened i mean there's there's the one aspect is the interop story you have mm -hmm. the everything that that chris nuremberger and mm -hmm. uh, um and james has been working mm -hmm. on um uh, the lib uh, um lib, lib python, python clj yeah lib yeah python clj great. which actually gives you access to all of the python mm -hmm. ecosystem of data if you need of course if you want to do python ecosystem stuff you you better stay with stay with python but mm -hmm. there might be certain things you want to sometimes cherry pick from that that ecosystem and that's super easy mm -hmm. and not only can you access python from from closure and and the uh, closure data science sort mm -hmm. of uh, workflow but but chris Chris has also built this zero copy way of, of accessing NumPy data structures. Mm -hmm. So you, you can with very little cost, you can actually intermix these different data structures. So it, it is actually pretty, pretty advanced and pretty innov innovative what they have done. But then the, the other thing you mentioned is the whole uh, um, TMD uh, library um, mm -hmm. area that Chris has been working on, which is about ar array programming and makes the sort of numerical or, or data manipulation tasks that data scientists um, are used to make super, super effective, uh, efficient and, mm -hmm. and fast. They, actually, there, there is this amazing benchmark chart where... where uh, oh, I've seen it. Yes, yes. That's, I, I, um, I think that's actually part of how I fell into the Cycloge community as I, I saw it posted on Reddit. I think it was Reddit data science or Reddit closure, one of one of the things, and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Chris had gotten involved. What was it? Was it was it Julia, J Jenny, um, Clo and yeah, then a yeah, few the of Chris's libraries, and he got involved and ended up um, providing some answers himself. But I that's and I that was one of the breadcrumbs that had led me to finding Cyclose. As around that time, I, I saw I was like, oh. Nice. <laughs> I mean, of course, you always need to take these bench up marks with a grain of salt, mm -hmm. and they're not they're not the entire truth. But it goes to show that you can you can make it as fast and mm -hmm. actually even more fast than mm -hmm. most of the other platforms. I mean, the comparisons there are the mm -hmm. usual ones, the different mm -hmm. different data table mm -hmm. type libraries in R, Dplyr, or data table, and mm -hmm. the the Python ecosystem and and closure is very fast. Also, there's also the Spark. Uh, you mentioned Jenny's. Mm -hmm. uh, a Spark API, mm -hmm. uh, uh, idiomatic closure API. So there's a lot of things that has happened. But to get back to what sort of how this came together, so yes. there is um, there's that part. There's also, but it's not only the things that are happening in I mean, mm -hmm. there's there's a larger community at work. We mm -hmm. we have the Smile library with the machine learning mm -hmm. algorithms we can use now, mm -hmm. um, we, which hasn't been directly sort of part of the cycloge community but it's mm -hmm. it's stuff that we are we are using and and and, and working with mm. um, but of course yeah and many other of course we shouldn't forget dragon's work he does amazing work with uh, linear algebra and and his books about deep learning and stuff like that so a mm -hmm. lot of things pieces have been falling to place now mm -hmm. so it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty exciting at the moment mm -hmm. well um well speaking to the community because i think that in some ways, um, you know, we, I was referring to the community in a more abstract sense when you said, oh, no one's been in that long. I just mean the data science. The community has an abstract sense. But then we also talk about our community as the Cyclosh community. And mm. um, this is something Sami and I talked last week in preparation for his talk at Reclosure uh, in a couple weeks. And we spoke of how since we're building this community from the ground up, since we have the, the privilege of paying attention to some of these harder issues from the beginning, um, you know, how hard it can be to do a course correction after the fact. And um, I just wanted to ask you, um, you've been doing a bunch of interviews, you've been talking to people, what are some of the most important things that you think that we need to be um, cognizant about as we build this community from the ground up? Since we have the privilege of having our eyes open 
now it's 2020 we realize some of these things are issues we realize that there are underrepresented groups in tech we realize that our demographics can be uh they can all look the same um mm -hmm. what what have what are some of the reflections that you've gathered from talking to people what do we need to pay attention to yeah yeah that's a, a fantastic question and and for the context of the of the talk i'm i'm sort of trying to figure out um what it takes because we're at the phase shift like i said we need mm -hmm. to get much more aware of of the community starting to grow and we need mm -hmm. to be more mindful how how we how we grow it mm -hmm. so i'm looking at different aspects in the interviews i'm talking to a bunch of people from the communities mm -hmm. um some some really at the sort of the first ones who join and some some who are are um um are more more recent like yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> for mm -hmm. instance and uh, um, of course, but I look at a few different different things. I look at the onboarding experience. I look at the mm -hmm. tech uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I try to boil. I haven't finished the talk yet, but I try mm -hmm. to boil this into a, a sensible, a, a sensible whole, something that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's true. This uh, diversity is is a super important important uh, thing to to think about and be very aware about. Of course, I mean, it, in a way, it's something that people have been talking about mm -hmm. uh, more and more luckily mm -hmm. but um, but it's not easy because mm -hmm. I, the, the, I have to mention there is this very en enlightening podcast uh, by or an episode in Stuart Sierra's podcast called mm -hmm. No Manifestos oh I did listen where... to that you recommended you did yeah 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 and and the main thing they they talked to Mark now I his name escapes me, but he had mm -hmm. had a, a mailing list mm -hmm. of, um, since a long time, like 2006 or something like mm -hmm. that, it's steadily growing. And he very dramatically decided to shut it down mm -hmm. uh, this summer mm -hmm. um, to simplify the story. He, he mm -hmm. came to the conclusion that that it would require too much effort to change the culture. It mm -hmm. was too... Um, too male engineer, the sort of typical tech mm -hmm. uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And he realized there was a few key points when he realized that it's it's not um, it is not a place where the other perspective feel comfortable. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the community wasn't only it was more diverse than that, but the voices, the discourse was was around that the culture mm. was around that. And he tried to change that a little bit, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't succeed and there was a few few moments that led to him actually coming to the conclusion that he's going to close it mm -hmm. which wasn't a small thing there was 800 people mm -hmm. there as well but what one of the key takeaways from that conversation there was a few uh, enlightening things one was that he, he talked about yeah it's really about the start mm -hmm. you you sort of that's when it happens. That's where the culture happens. And it's mm -hmm. very difficult to change it from that point of view, uh, after that po point. And um, so I think in our case, I, I think we're still very, very much in the beginning phase. We, we're, mm -hmm. we're still super small. If you're mindful, we can think think about that and we can try to try to do what we can to change that. No, not only that, mm -hmm. it's not only about some sort of a um ethical or moral responsibility mm -hmm. in terms of data science and this is stuff that that comes out in the discussions that we've mm -hmm. been discussing with with the people in terms of data science it's 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 absolutely crucial actually the data science community i mean if you want to grow if you want to be a popular data science tool mm -hmm. the data science community is very diverse mm -hmm. it's diverse in the sort of gender it's mm -hmm. diverse in cultures it's mm -hmm. diverse in time zones like like you said <laughs> yeah. but but and if you look at the sort of successful um other other communities there's our community mm -hmm. which is super mm -hmm. diverse mm -hmm. it, it has been said that r is a huge programming community and mm -hmm. what is interesting about r is that most of the p programmers there are not programmers they they are uh, marketeers, they mm -hmm. are physicians, they are biologists, they are uh, mm -hmm. all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the reason why, why, why it's also 
because it doesn't only come from this sort of comp computer mm -hmm. science background, which which has these issues and, mm -hmm. uh, and these problems. Oh, that's that's very that's very that's interesting. That's a very good perspective. Um, that that reminds me of um, last week. I actually think you were in attendance, and so was Daniel. I attended a webinar that was it was Dark Sider. So it was REPL tooling in Emacs for closure. So this is just very esoteric nerdy stuff here. <laughs> and at one point we had up to eighty people. And I mean, I, I investigated, I Googled people's names and I was the only woman in attendance. Mm -hmm. And uh, it j I, was, I was just, I was shocked. And it made me really think about how to solve, how we go about solving these problems because I don't think it's necessarily the fault of the community. There are so many cognitive leaps that uh, a female or a person of color or just any underrepresented demographic would have to make, not only would they need to get into programming, JavaScript mm -hmm. or Python or any of the kind of entry level languages, but then they would need to find closure. And mm -hmm. then they would need to start using Emacs, which is a whole other thing. And then they would need to be interested enough and do closure enough and be interested enough in Emacs to show up to a webinar on a Monday afternoon about the secrets they don't want you to know about CIDR, how to best mm. use it. Mm. And those are just so many leaps. And it's how, how do we do we get more underrepresented people in tech in general? Do mm. we try to tap in? Do we go to conferences and send out recruit secret closure recruiters to, to strange loop? Um, hey, mm. you look underrepresented. Come join the closure team. <laughs> You know, that's mm. none of these seem like great solutions. Um, and I would love to hear your your thoughts on that, about how we can even do because, as you said, it's a it's a problem that's reflective of the larger community and even in hiring practices. Mm. How are you supposed to hire more women in for closure or closure script when the the pool just isn't that big? How do you solve those problems? How do we go about it? And whose responsibility is it? Is mm. it the underrepresented pe people in tech? Because I feel like they've gone through a lot already. Is it mm. their responsibility? Is it our responsibility to reach out and mentor and help and help them get started? Um, is it shared? Uh, you've, mm. you've been talking about this and interviewing people. I would love to hear your perspective on this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a few, a few points there. Um, um uh, it it's <laughs> i've been before in these meetups when where i start to look around and I, I see there's nothing but people who look exactly like me and um um that's a super tricky tricky question i think there are a few few things to take into account one one is of course that when you're hiring it's a different it's a little bit different situation mm -hmm. than what we're talking about now sure. where we're talking about open source source mm -hmm. uh, development and mm -hmm. communities because because you don't uh, yeah you your your possibilities of of sort of um how should i say this sort of systematically go for mm -hmm. changing the situation in mm -hmm. terms of recruitment those because you are happy whenever somebody joins and you should be happy because mm -hmm. because you, you you need more people so you, you don't have all the tools you would have in mm -hmm. in 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 the industry and i think actually this was something that dave lipman brought up also when we we discussed about about this during my mm -hmm. interviews but um but there's a lot of things we can do i mean and and actually, I think Closure Community mm -hmm. has made quite some efforts on this whole the whole Closure mm -hmm. Bridge. Yeah, I I did want to say that I don't want to discount Closure Bridge. Is they, they we have done some stuff. So I, I realized after I said that I don't don't want to discount that because we are doing things. Um, but but certainly not enough. But <laughs> and and there are there are, I think probably the Berlin scene. I I mean I I have oh. some friends mm -hmm. uh, who are much more diverse uh, mm -hmm. in the community than than some of the meetups I, mm -hmm. I attend to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what what to do? I I think one one thing is that 
that's one cop out is to say, well, you know, we need to be more diverse to be diverse. We, <laughs> I, as a male, middle aged yeah, uh, yeah. man, uh -huh. cannot be that. That's that's the cop out because it's uh -huh. not true. I mean, I can do a lot. Uh, although I think it's also part of it is true. We really need to find these people who can who can make it happen and bring that perspective much stronger. And maybe mm -hmm. I have to have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. But something that was super, super powerful was I, I talked to to one of the people I interviewed, they, mm -hmm. um, um, who is not uh, does not look like me. Mm -hmm. And and she explained the the experience of entering her first closure meetup mm -hmm. and being sort of uh, I, I'm not doing her justice when I mm -hmm. tell the story here, but mm -hmm. but but for me, she was telling how it feels like to mm -hmm. come to a room when there's only people like that. It smacks you in uh, the face because you don't realize you don't realize. And then suddenly you start flipping through. And I, that's that's what happened to me. I was on Zoom and I just started flipping through and and I got so like I said, I even Googled. It. I was like, Andreas. Oh, that could be turns out to be a guy <laughs> from France. <laughs> yes, uh, but. But what happened in that specific case was that it turned out that this, this, these people in this uh, meetup, the whole community that she became part of, was super helpful, super mm -hmm. facilitating, super, super, and it not not in a kind of a sort of um, artificial way, but genuinely mm -hmm. willing to listen mm -hmm. and interested in in ideas. So I think we mm -hmm. have to look at. All of us has to has to look at our patterns. We don't always notice how we behave, mm -hmm. the behavior aspects, and have to be very mindful of, mindful of those things and reach out. I mean, like I, I think for for the data science story, it's a bigger mm -hmm. question than that. If we want to be popular and big, we need to be welcoming for for mm -hmm. everyone because the the people to make this popular they are they are much more diverse than the. Uh, some uh, the kind of basic engineering um, uh, um, middle class white white mm -hmm. middle aged middle class I don't know uh, maybe mm -hmm. anyway um, white white programmers uh, <laughs> yeah I I agree I think those are really great insights I, I you you when you said that we need to be cognizant of our actions even just informing ourselves so we can start to change our behavior is very important mm. um, and I appreciate you saying that it's great um, so your talk is going to happen at reclosure on the 5th of December it's going to be 11 a.m. GMT uh, I believe that's pretty early in the States I'm going to post the link below where mm -hmm. the, the time is so you can get your local time zone time uh, did you have anyone, any last thoughts you wanted to share with us? No, <laughs> <laughs> just, just, uh, join us and come and I can, I mean, you don't have to wait for the talk. You can, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure when, when this is out, but you can, mm -hmm. you can Google Zulip, uh, the mm -hmm. chatting, um, uh, platform where oh. we, where, where we exist and maybe yes. you can put, put some links in, in, the in the description oh in the description uh, i'm gonna link um the the study group uh the fundamentals group which is not as fundamental as it would lead you to believe but <laughs> um all of those links will be below uh the zulip you mentioned that's that's something worth mentioning a lot of people are familiar with the closure slack we primarily communicate on zulip i was very hesitant to make the change because i was like ah, eh, another one eh. mm -hmm. but Zulip is great. Uh, highly encourage everybody to get on the data science Zulip. Uh, and the problem we have with Slack where you can't search answers doesn't exist in Zulip. And everything on Slack is mirrored over the Zulip as far as my understanding. Um, so Zulip, yeah. you kind of get everything. In Slack, you see a piece of the puzzle of the Clojarian Slack, from my understanding. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very important. Do do take the effort to come to Zulip. It works well for these kind of community things. It mm -hmm. has many advantages. Uh, come there. That's mm -hmm. that's fantastic. And I would like to you know add that that yeah, come and come and play with us. Come and come and uh, build this community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be. I mean, if you're interested in learning about data, data science, that's a good place. 
but you don't have to be a data scientist or expert or something. We need all kinds of help. I mean, oh, we... I know. That's how I got involved. Y'all don't yeah. think I'm a data scientist. I, I, <laughs> I am yeah. interested yeah. in data science. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I guess because I'm interested, I, you know, I am a data scientist, but yeah, I, exactly. I am merrily interested and I mm. know closure and I know Python. Mm. So mm. I just started showing up and I recommend that y'all do too. There are so many different ways to contribute. Uh, one of the ways, for example, I'm contributing is doing talks with you and making, you know, helping, helping Daniel mm. with build some of the, uh, the entry point, um, you know, mm. doing videos to explain things. That's something we'll be doing in the future. So mm. anything, if you have any interest, please join us. We would just love to have anybody with any interest. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need, you don't need to do anything. Just show up and have your camera off and you can be a lurker if you want. But I mean, mm. eventually it'd be nice if you turn, you know, talked, but you could just show up and lurk. We would love that. And you, but you can have your camera on. You, you can have your camera. I'm I'm a big camera on person, but <laughs> I realize I have the luxury of a, a private office and no kids, and you know I I realize I have the luxury. Uh, although you with your camera, ah, oh, just this camera is awesome. That's that's my next upgrade. I'll have to ask. No, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, on that note, we will bid y'all adieu. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, and thank you. Uh, hopefully, we will see you again soon. Bye. Oh, yeah, thank you for tuning in.